in in uh, this video, we're going to look at the uh, the round piece that is smooth on the top and basically covers the same footprint as this one. So we're going to bring this one in as our um, as our reference piece here. So I'm going to take this and pull it down 3.2 millimeters so that we'll have it sitting underneath. And let's go ahead and uh, get moving here. I'm going to move to my empty mesh layer. And we're going to start with a cylinder that is 16 millimeters by 1.6. That'll give us our our height um, by 16 millimeters. And for sides, I'm going to choose 36 sides. And the reason for that is we have we're going to have gaps for four holes, and then we're going to have space in between that's roughly. It's two times the size here. Let's see if my math adds up. Um, so instead of just having one poly to cover the open gap in each of these, we're going to make two poly, or excuse me, three polys cover the open. So it would be four for these, and then another eight. Oh yeah, double eight for each of the for the spaces. Um, so that would be twelve. But we're going to triple that. Double that gives you some weird things trying to balance the polygons in between. But triple that gives you a relatively good even uh, place to work with. So let's go ahead and that and sorry should be eight because this is the, uh, the radius not the diameter all right try that again eight there we go. that makes sense okay so now you will see here is if we look each of these um, each of these bumps is falling into a space right in between three polys so three for that three for that and then we'll have these nice broad set of polys uh, that will make up our um, our open or excuse me our extended spaces that go down to the bottom. Okay, so let's take start here by grabbing uh, this section, and we want to bevel in. And in this one, the other reason that we have this background piece there is so that we can see the. Um, the depth of the bevel. And what we want to do is, let's go to our top view here, I'm going to bring this in even with the inner edge on these because this is all a uniform scale. It should be about 1.6 millimeters too. Oh, and there we go, sure enough. 1.6, let's go and enter that in. There we go, 1.6 millimeters and that's working really nicely. And let's bevel it up. So again, we'll go up 1.7 meters millimeters as we have been doing with other ones 1.7 and that gives us the uh, the starting point here the next thing we're going to need to do is create a slice on this outside that's level with the uh, the inside so that we can remove chunks of polygons here so I'm going to run loop slice uh, set it to one and I'm just going to click because I'm going to have to align this anyway so because um, I'm not going to get a percentage that's going to exactly line up so I'll just um, select that edge uh, change my action center to element, go to the scale tool, click inside here, and flatten that out. Now we're totally even. Okay, so we've got these holes then that we can remove, which actually I can select the middle one and just hit the shift up arrow. So let's uh, let's get all of them since we're going after them here all together. So we get the middle polygon in each of those, shift up arrow, and cut. And we've got a good start here. Okay, so um, actually, not take that back. Before we cut those out, let's uh, let's even out our edges because these edges are spreading, kind of with the uh, the, the aim towards center um, perspective. And we want we don't want that. We want them to be um, flat and actually angled in a little bit. That will kind of follow the contour of uh, this piece that's underneath here. So let's um, let's then go to edge mode. And I'm going to turn on some symmetry. I'll start with symmetry on the X here. And what we'll do is we'll start by grabbing one of these edges. And we will align it. There it is. We'll align it to the outside edge here. So what I want to do is um, right click on this guy, choose slide. And then we just want to slide it up to there. And I want to check my sliding percentage so that I can I'll line that up. So I'm just going to type that into 60. Just got a nice even number to work with. 
Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing here with this third one over. So again, right click, slide, and slide it out. Oops, sorry, choosing the wrong one here. This one, that makes more sense. Slide, and then we'll drag it out. Again, it's 60% on that one. Okay, and um, then we'll draw in our middle ones here. So choose that one, slide, and we'll just pull this one pretty far in. You know, it's going to overlap a little. Actually, here, before I do that, I'm going to take it back. Let's, um, let's go ahead and run a loop slice through the middle of this, because that's another thing that we will need is a loop slice. Um, that way we have something in the middle to, uh, to cover our, our edge. And actually here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to turn this to free. I'm going to draw this loop slice out a little bit, because we're also going to have a little bit of a lip that we'll have to remove from there. So I'm just going to draw it out to about there. So it's kind of in the right place for the lip. And it can also help set the, uh, the angle for our... Um, uh, for our piece here. All right, so this starts to become a real, um, a real mess of a mesh. Uh huh. Uh, pardon the terrible pun. But uh, now I'm going to go ahead and grab these. And actually, here, let's do this. Um, I'm going to do this a slightly different way with the other pieces. And what I want to do is I'm going to grab this edge here. And uh, let's see here. Before I get ahead of myself, let's uh, let's adjust the inside on the other ones first because that will be kind of the good starting point. So let's see, that was my mirrored part. Let's hide our background here for just a second. Okay, so those two were mirrored, and I'll have to do these two here, and I think this is going to be the one. Let's bring our background back and see. Yep, that looks right. Grab this guy, slide, and we'll pull it in. This one's on the opposite, going the opposite direction, so we'll go negative 40%. And, uh, gosh, sorry, I picked the wrong one. I'm doing real good here. Slide again, slide it out 60%. Maybe that number seemed off. And then we'll get this guy, slide it out, also 60%. Okay, so now we've got all of those in place here. Let's hide our, our other one. And we do have a little bit of a difference here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this and rerun the loop slice now that this is already done. There we go. So I'll even out everything here. Okay. So now what we'll have to do is we will adjust this inner edge. Oops, excuse me, these inner ones so that they line up, and then also the uh, the last one out. And I can just use the point here, and I'm gonna select. Let's see, do I have all of them here? Okay, that'll work. And what we'll do is I'm going to bring back my top here. I'm going to set my action center to origin. And I use the rotate tool. Let's get back to a top view here so we can see. I'm going to use the rotate tool. And I'm just going to rotate these around roughly into place. And I want to leave a little bit of a gap here at the end because it's going to come around through that to get to that end piece. So we'll do that. Okay, now I'm going to get the edge that goes with it out here. So let's get this edge. And, oops, looks like I did something there. Here, let's, uh, what happened to that? Let's try that again. Feels like I might have inadvertently dragged it. There we go. So, four degrees. For that. I'll have to remember that for when I go the other direction, which actually we'll do that right now. Let's grab this top or this point, this point, rotate, we'll go four degrees. Good. And we'll grab this edge, this edge, bring back our background again. 
rotate somewhere about like there. So that's eight degrees now. I have that one a little easier to read. This edge and this edge. Maybe it will rotate. This time we'll go eight degrees the other way. All right, now we have something that uh, will actually kind of align. So I'm going to grab both of those two now. Make sure I get them on all of my sets. Shift up arrow and cut. And that will leave us a nice hole there. So uh, before we get going too far, I'm going to bevel this in. I'll go in the, uh, the now customary 100 millimeters or 100 UM. And get some separation there. Okay. All right, so this is working uh, working relatively well there. All right, so now we just need to bridge together our sides. So what we want to do is we want to bridge so that we create kind of a scoop through here. So let's maximize that. So we want to bridge from this side into that side. And since we have uh, that loop slice there, we'll need to run one actually in the other direction. Let me turn my symmetry off for the moment. Oops. And we'll go this way. So that we have the, the matching loop slices there. Might have to make a little bit of a tweak on that one, but I think we'll probably be okay. So let's select that. I'm going to deselect the entire top here. You select the entire top, so those top three, run the bridge tool, bridge, and then I'm going to set this up, loop slice, and I was at, uh, I'm just going to, I'm at 80.5, so let's turn to uh, symmetry, count of two, and I'll just drag that to, to match up. And then we'll, oops, looks like I actually uh, should have just attached those. So let's go ahead and select this one and then the outer one and we'll just join those. So let's go edge, join, clear that up. And I'm selecting the outer edge last because that's where I want to join to. Okay. Obviously, a bunch of rounding will need, or a bunch of uh, sharpening will have to occur there, but this will be okay. We also have something to flatten out here, it looks like. So I'm going to go grab this point right here, run my scale tool. Actually, hmm, that's going to be the best way to do that. Let's go to Action Center Element. Click on this point right here. Set my axis to auto. So flatten it that way and that way. I should even things out. Let's grab this one again, scale. Just like this one. You can actually use that planar handle too if we want. There we go flatten that out. Now these look like they'll need to be adjusted. I think they will, but uh, we'll do those all together when we finish. And I, I didn't have my symmetry turned on, which is you know, a definite no-no with something this uh, with this much complexity. But what I'll do instead is I'll just grab this section all through here and oops, run my mirror tool across the uh, Z click apply and then I'll run it across the X and click apply oops Don't do that X and apply and then I'm gonna grab this part and we'll run across the Z again we should be all set yep looks like we are good that saves us all the time of having to go in and rebridge any of those manually uh, the thing is to make sure that you're well 
Um, you have your symmetry set up well before you do that. So let's see here. Let's get this edge, this edge. I'm going to do this without my mirroring on. And I find it's, it might be a little easier. So let's get all of that. Let's turn on our background layer. Go to the top view. Rotate tool. Set our axis or our action center to the origin again. And we're just going to rotate that out a little bit. So one and a half degrees. And we'll do the same thing now for these ones there, 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 there. If I can get close enough to run it at 1.5, there we go. Alright, so let's go ahead and hit the tab key. Let's see, we're actually getting there here. Um, since we're going to be in subdies a little bit more here, I'm going to go ahead and bevel this part in. And then I'm also going to run a loop slice, but just a single one up along the top side here. And I'm going to not run my loop slices along the bottom yet because I need to create that divot. Um, and basically what that's going to be is that's going to run um, in this far and then about this height. Uh, to get the exact height, what we're going to do is bring in a reference piece like we've done before here. So let's go ahead and bring in this piece right there. We'll go to our quad view. And let's maximize any one of my orthos uh, or either the front or the side. And oops, let's make sure we're on the right layer. Let's run um, Shift C. And that's pretty close, not 100%. So we'll go back and grab the whole thing. The action center to auto. Just drag that up. There we go. And then we'll, we'll see that we'll actually take this whole chunk out. So that's how we'll uh, that's how we'll deal with that. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn on my um, symmetry. I think on. Uh, let's go with our Z symmetry here to start. There we go. Select all of this. Step here, we'll cut that out. So now what we'll need to do, oops, actually looks like we get rid of that one too. Yes, we do. Let's get rid of that one too. So now what we need to do is we'll need to come to this section here. need to edge extend upwards to meet this point and then we'll bridge from there out so let's do our edge extend we'll cut to a side view let's drag that up And then to make sure that we have this aligned, what I'll do is we'll run again the scale tool. We'll set our axis to element. Let's flatten that down, make sure it's all the way flat. Okay. We'll probably actually have a uh, couple of disjointed tab. Yeah, we're probably gonna have a little bit of a of a deal there, but that's okay. We can uh, we can merge that together after. So let's deselect the ends. Oops, yeah. See that's what's causing us our problem here. So we'll go ahead and run our merge tool while we're here. So let's go vertex merge. There we go. So we deselect the ends. bridge and there we have it 
So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to select, actually before we do that, let's go cut these ones out. So let's change our symmetry right now to X. Get all of these. Get change my symmetry back to oops, Y back to Z. And then we just need to get these two along here. These two rows of polys. And uh, mirroring isn't going to work because we're on an angle. So what I'm going to do is um, copy, hide, paste, double click on each of these and set my symmetry back off. There's the rotate tool, get the origin action center, and just rotate those 90 degrees. Unhide, and we'll have to run our, uh, our merge tool again. And when we hit tab, we should have those just right. Okay, so now we're ready to start adding loop slices in that will sharpen this up. We have uh, an X to add into the center, and this will be all done. So let's uh, let's do the loop slices now just to, uh, to break up this so that we have a at least a relatively finished looking piece before we add in that midsection. Right there. Go down here. And let's just do them one section at a time. Do it all the way around. Two. Okay. Um, let's see. Didn't run them along here yet, did I? Those and those. Those. And those, and then we'll run loop slice. This one I'm probably going to soften up a bit because it's a real close edge there. Okay, then we'll run through here. We might have to do a little bit of adjusting on some of our edges on the inner part of this. Definitely going to have to. Actually, here, let's see if we can get away without having those. Let's check this piece. This does get really roundy in there, so I think we might be able to just leave that. In our background piece here and see how we're doing. We're getting pretty close. The, uh, yeah, this part here is just this edge that we had added in before, and we pretty much knew we were going to need that, so. And we'll go ahead and adjust that here. Let's hide that so we can see to make the selection easier. Okay. So rotate, make sure we're at origin action center, which we are. Let's bring back our reference piece. Like just one degree is going to do it. Let's select the other side and do the same thing. Rotate and just one degree. There we go. All right, so let's check this out in uh, our unwire framed version. We're all looking pretty good. Yep. And let's turn up our subdivision here on this. Yeah, that helps. Yeah, this area is kind of rounded. Oops, actually it looks like we got one more little chunk here. We had added in this loop slice here, and we do need to even this out or else it's gonna 
that kind of stand out. Maybe in context when it's when it's assembled might not be as noticeable, but uh, we're going for accuracy, which we are. We want these to be looking pretty pretty good even by themselves. Four. The rotate tool bring in our backdrop one. Looks like one seems to be the magic number there, one degree. So we'll do the same thing on the other side and then we'll uh, move on to the interior little X that we've got to do. With things like this, when you have um, round pieces, it always pays to take a little bit of time adjusting where essentially your low poly cage is, and the uh, the results are going to be really nice. Usually, will be well worth the uh, the effort. There we go. And we might need an extra loop slice around each of these. All right, so we're back up. Had a little system crash there. Um, now we pretty much have everything uh, ready. I could spend a little bit more time maybe adjusting these through here, but uh, they're looking pretty good even with um, a piece inserted underneath. We turn on our background one right there. See, that's looking uh, like a pretty nice alignment. Got a little bit of space up above, which is accurate. And uh, yeah, overall, we're pretty, pretty good to go here. So now let's uh, go ahead and insert this little X that comes in the middle. And uh, in order to do that, I'm going to unsubdivide here for a minute and go to my quad view. I'm going to select this inner poly here and I'm just going to bevel this. Oops, turn off our automatic action center. And, or excuse me, our symmetry is what I want off there. I bevel this in. Oops, I accidentally added an extra bevel. That's okay. Uh, oops, actually we can see this is uh, not going to work. That's okay because uh, we have that one bevel anyway. Um, again, since we have edges that are slightly unevenly spaced, then um, we need to do the scaling manually or else we'll start to get crossing. Okay, and that ought to work here. So, and I'm actually just going to go a little bit larger here because I want a little bit of a space to be able to attach into. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create um, an X, and the X actually, um, unfortunately for us, goes diagonally here. So it goes diagonally from there to there. It aligns with the, uh, the holes in this piece and with the inside edge of the bumps so that they uh, have something to hold them into place. Um, so we'll create one here. We need to double check. We should have 36 edges, which we do. So we need to create this with 36 sides. So I think what I'm going to do here to give ourselves a good starting point here is I'm going to copy, hide, paste, scale, and just pull this in a little bit here. Maybe this one I'll move in to the actual inner edge of the piece. Ooh, it looks like that's about it. So I'm going to go into the inner edge of the piece, um, and this will give us a, a starting point here. Actually, let's unhide here. I'm going to grab this piece that's out there. We don't even need that, so I'm just going to cut that out because that's what we'll attach to. All right, so now let's uh, go ahead and hide this background piece since we don't need it anymore. And we're going to want to do a couple of things here in order to get this right. We um, want to take these uh, points here, and these need to um, come in closer to this middle point because we want this to be just right down the middle of these. So what I'm going to do is do something a lot like we had done. Let me get my work plane out of the way there. There we go. Actually, that's pretty good. Um, I'm going to grab the right hand side one of each of these. So that's not it. And. Sure that I'm in the right place here. So that one, 
this one, then this one, and this one, there we go. And let's use just our rotate tool, make sure that action center is set to origin. And then just rotate these around until they get really close to that, uh, to that inner edge here. If this becomes difficult to see, what you can always do is grab this piece, bevel it, and then scale that bevel in a little bit. Okay. That way we can deal with edges instead of uh, instead of vertices, since the edges are redrawn in OpenGL, but the vertices aren't. Unless you turn on vertices, I personally don't like turning in ver turning on vertices. I find they end up getting in my way a lot more than helping out. So let's go to that one, that one, that one, and that one. And again, I'm going to rotate this origin action center. I didn't write down or remember my degrees on that, but that looks pretty, pretty good. Okay. So let's go ahead and that guy out and I'm gonna just use the bridge tool here to get started so I'm gonna select the three edges on this side and the three on this side whoops and I'm just gonna run bridge this is gonna create these crossing but not attaching at first but that's alright it will at least give us uh, good positioning uh, and good spacing so that we can do that more easily in a second so let's bridge bridge um, now I'm going to take this section here, uh, counter two and symmetry on my loop slices. I'm going to pull this in until it just about aligns with that. So 43%. Oops, probably could have just left it. Looks like it dropped in right at 43%. Okay. Now I'm just going to select all of this stuff in here, cut it out. Now we have something that, uh, that we can actually attach to here. So let's, uh, let's see here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide if I want to create a polygon here or if I want to join those points together and I think I'll create a polygon. And the way that I can do that quickly is by grabbing these two edges and bridging grab these two edges. Oops. Something not quite right there. There we go. For some reason those didn't want to line up right and that was just the uh, the twist fixed it though. So let's bridge there. Looks like these all want that same twist here. So let's go ahead and bridge all those together. Okay. Um, and now, um, let's go ahead and grab these two here and bridge. These two here and bridge. These two here. Bridge. Oops. And this one probably needs to be back to normal. Yeah, it does. Okay. Um, that gives me a good start here. So I'm going to grab this edge, and we can see we actually, hmm, actually running into a corner here and an open edge there. So to fix that, oops, let's unsubdivide here. What I want to do then is I'm just going to run a single loop slice through the middle of each of these. And it kind of solidifies those corners too, so that'll be good. Um, and then I'm going to run single loop slice on each of these here too to tighten up around the outer edge. So let's oops, turn this to free. I'm just going to drag that out. I know I'm getting a relatively good shape there. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'll take these two edges and these two edges here and bridge those. And let's see. That's a one. Get rid of these two. I'm going to change to Actually, this ought to work like that. Let's just test this before we uh, before we move on. So this, deselect that and that. No, take it back. We didn't need to. So let's back up here and bridge with one subdivision. Select that and that. Bridge and that works. Okay. So let's do the same thing here. Select this and this. Bridge. And I'm going to grab all of this geometry right here. And I'm. Oops. One too far. I did. There we go. Grab this geometry here. Um, and let's see. We are not in the in a good point here. So what I'm going to do is copy, hide, paste. Take this. Rotate. We're still on our action center there. So copy, paste, rotate. Copy, paste, and rotate. Then we'll unhide. I'm going to select all of this just to make sure that this merges right. So I'll go vertex merge. Make sure that's down to zero. Yep, we just want to see those parts there be deselected, which is just what happened. So now I'm going to select all through this middle section. And then right in here, basically getting this entire T or this X. Selected here in the middle. And I'm going to bevel that. Oops, make sure group poly is, is on. Pull down 1.7 millimeters. Oops. Oops, set that to 2 in symmetry. should still have, if we select this, 36 edges, which we do. And here we need to check our scaling. I think this one we had scaled correctly, so yep, we do. So now we'll select this, and we'll run bridge, and there we go. All done. What we might want to do is run one extra loop around here. Oh, no. Maybe that's not it. Oh, I see. So we ended up with uh, these edges here. Could be tightened up a bit. If you want to adjust that, some symmetry on them. And let's unsubdivide. Might get some redryers here when you're unsubdivided, but that's okay. And I'm going to go ahead and slide this. Oops, meant to get one more there. Go ahead and slide this. And 
really close out to that edge. It would be similar in distance to that uh, edge bevel there. Or something like that. And we'll do the same thing here. Oops, I'm brilliant. Forgot to check the check the distance here, so let's slide it again. And it looks like 82.6 looks good. Slide this one. And I'm probably going to scale this one out, but I'll do those all together in just a minute. So go ahead and take care of these. Again, slide. 82.6. This guy here. Slide again. Should be all of those. Yep, there it is. So I'm just going to select this edge here on each of these. We're just going to run the scale tool just right from center and pull those out a little bit. And that's going to help sharpen up that corner. There we go. That is looking better. Okay, so there's that piece. Go ahead and create my item preset. This is two to round smooth. Okay, check our layout. There it is. All right, ready with that one. See you in the next video.